This is your mirrors. This is the bottom side of both mirrors. You click it from that side, click it for this side. In the center of it, kills this switch. That's the top side of both mirrors. This is your air conditioner and heater set up. I did that with the fan when I turned the air conditioner on. This is defrost, heated mirrors, idle up, idle down, your hazards, your dome lights. All right. I need you to shut that door. It's not that big of a deal for you. All right, on that dome light, you have white and red. In the center of this, open up that door. When this switch is in the center, it will turn the lights on, whether you got it to red or if you got it to white. In the top part of it, shut that door. It'll have them on all the time, whether you want red or white. If you got it down here in the bottom, it turns them off and they will never come on at all. Now, with that being said, push that red light. They oh. push button, both of them are. Yeah. There you go. All right, brighten and dim your displays. Uh, fog lights, bright, bright lights. Master scene switch. You can leave all these up. That turn that one switch will turn every emergency light on on this truck. All right. With that being said, see how this one is the only independent switch of it at all. Mm -hmm. That's your beacon lights. Okay. Do, you know, so that way if you're doing non-emergent, the little amber lights blinking on the side, that's what them are. You can turn them off independently of each other. Okay. But master lights there. This is for your horn. All right. So with the horn, with it up here like this. You can do that. You can turn that off, it disables the horn. It disables all of this down here. With that green up here, you can hit both of them. This is a design where if you're at a scene, you can hit, do like that right there. And if you hit, hit it with your boots or whatever, getting in and out, you don't startle the fireman. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or signal and back. Yeah. All right. This is your main headlight switch. So when you turn this on, these will come on then. You turn them off and they go off and it'll hold, it won't hold the memory. All right, with that being said, this one with the key switch on, with the headlight switch on, this will hold a memory. See how it did not come on? But if you turn your bright lights on, these will come on. All right, so I call them bright, bright lights. At the very bottom of the truck, and we can go out there and I can show you if you want to, there's two sets of fog lights. There's an outside set and an inside set. Depending on how they wire the truck, either this set is the inside or it is the outside. But they are not one inside, one outside. It's either the outside or the inside. So if you're working on the truck and you think, oh, headlights, them fog lights are out, make sure you come in here, put it on bright, and that's green. Green mean it works. We couldn't figure out how to turn on all four of them when we were over there on Wednesday. That's how you do it. Okay. That's exactly how you do it. Put it on high beam and make sure that's green. Mm -hmm. And that turns on all four lower lights. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to come over here to the transmission control. We've been running long enough. You know how I told you I could you could check the transmission uh, for electronically in here and simple and dipstick? Yes. This is how you do it. Hold the plus and minus sign. It tells you oh, transmission level's okay. Mm -hmm. You push it again, it tells you how much life is left in the oil. Huh. You push it again, it'll tell you your filters are okay. It'll tell you what the transmission health is, tell you if it have a code or not, and it goes back to neutral. Okay. I show you this so that way you can have a problem with the transmission mm -hmm. and you think it's wrong. You can look at this, and if it has a code, hey judge, it's got this code right here and I can look at it before I ever come here, mm -hmm. I can get a game plan, oh, it's the filters. I'll bring a set of filters in the oil before I ever come all the way over here and fix it when I get here. Okay. Or tell you it's the oil and filters yeah. and you can change it. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to help okay. help troubleshoot it before I get here. Yeah. yeah. And you have to hold down the plus sign, the plus sign and the minus sign at the same time. Okay. And you just hit, keep hitting it until you go back to the neutral. Okay. All right. This is your four-wheel drive. 
All right, this can be done on the fly. There's like a pickup truck. With that being said, you should never, ever, ever put this in gear if you're going to make a turn on hard surface. Mm, it locks the differential. Locks the differential. All right, right there, that locks the, the axle. So it makes it like a limited slip. Okay. You know, up here, one back there. Mm -hmm. When you put it here, that locks it up like a like an interlock. Yeah. So all four tires are going to pull on the ground. Mm -hmm. If you make one turn with this truck like that, and on concrete, you are going to break an axle. Ooh. Okay. There's no question you are going to break an axle. The planetary and gear reduction on this truck mm -hmm. is extreme. So, when I say on the fly, I mean as if we were going straight over there into that pasture over there and we know it's been wet and dirty and we're not gonna make no turns and we're gonna go straight to that fence. We can come down here while we're driving, put it in there and it's not gonna allow it to do that until it meets a criteria. And you go through that fence and you meet that criteria, it's gonna lock it in and you're gonna keep on going. That's why I say on the fly. So basically you're never shifting that at all before you get into off the concrete. You don't shift that until after you get off the concrete. Yes, unless you're in a straight direct path going into wet and you're not gonna make a turn at all. Okay. If you're on any hard surface and you're gonna make a turn, it should never be put in interlock at all. Okay. Now if you're in wet surface or a, a loose surface, like loose dirt or whatever, you can put it in there and make turns. Yeah. But okay. I do not recommend ever doing that on a hard surface whatsoever. Okay. They'll never need it. Probably not. I just, I like, I had to, it's on the truck. I, I yeah. had to teach it. Well, yes. she ain't gone off road for at least 10 years. Tell me about breaking so. stuff, <laughs> axles and stuff. All right. This is your linear and lateral system. It's pretty self-explanatory. You turn too far one way or the other, it's going to tell you, hey, look, you're doing something wrong. All right, on these gauges, you have uh, your temp gauge, your oil pressure, your def gauge, and your fuel gauge. That's your def gauge right there. You need some def? Yes, sir, you do need some def. Fuel tank still full. All right, your, t your speedometer, your miles, and the hours you miles you've done there, and then it should do hours. There you go, you got your hours. Your battery, transmission, secondary primary air tachometer for the truck this will illuminate orange when you're in pump and roll when you're what and pump and roll which one that one okay <sighs> so when i'm in pump and roll that will illuminate to let you know hey look you're in pump and roll that's one of the tail signs you will be able to obviously tell it because what it's going to do is going to take uh power away from the throttle position sensor, mm -hmm. it's gonna make the threshold wider. So you're gonna push the gas down further before it gives a response. So you'll obviously know you're in it, but that's one of the telltale signs. All right, in this, you can go here and push and hold this button right here, and it will take you to another screen. And you can test your instrument panel Make sure if you got all your gauges working, you can read the parameters of the truck and you will select it. It tells me my def fluid's at 36%. My fuel levels at this, I got 50% oil pressure. My temperature is 147 on coolant. Tells you your battery voltage. It goes all the way down to tell you what your area is and everything. It's basically a digital gauge. Yes. Gotcha. Now, if you just let it sit there, it will go, it will default back to. Uh, the regular page show you how many miles and how many hours on the truck. Yeah. So what about regen? It will do it by itself. So I mean, is there an indication that it's doing it, or do you know, or do you have to do anything? Yep. You won't. You won't have to do anything. Yeah. Chances are you probably won't. Even, you might recognize it when it's brand new, first starting out. You have a little bit of a different smell to the exhaust. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go with the screen first. The screen is touch screen or button. So you have a camera button. So you hit the camera. It brings up the flare camera. It is on, connected to the roof turret. Oh, I see. 
Jesus. <laughs> well, they're not close enough. They come down. There you are. Yeah, see how, see how he lights up real wide? All right. Notice when you're in camera mode here, it throws your pressure for your pump over here, and it tells you what that turret is facing. Oh, okay. That's the roof turret. Yeah. So if I raise it up, it shows you I'm up 27 degrees. That's cool. Down, left or right. All right. You hit the camera button again, you see it's on channel one. If you hit it on channel two, that gives you your backup camera. Hmm. Now, there is what they call a bird's eye view. You don't have it on this truck. But if you did, you'd be in channel three and you would hit it and it would give a overhead view of the whole truck. You could actually see them fight fire from the side of the truck. So that you can access this at any time right now. And if you put it in reverse, it'll automatically throw this to it. So at any point in time you want to get out of this, you just hit home, it takes you back home. It should default to camera one. See? Alright. The red, the triangle. If this is red, that means something's wrong. Right now, it means if this is red, that means something wrong. If it's this color, it's right. So you would take this would be if it was red, it would have a code here to tell you something's wrong. So I'm gonna go to fault history to show you this is what was wrong with the truck that they've worked on or I have worked on and fixed. These are log codes of this truck. See, it gives you a timestamp, date, and time of everything that's on it. And, this, and you want active fault codes, it shows you there. So if a code pops up, it's gonna come here first, right? That's, that's for transmission. transmission. It will oh, show up. This code is strictly transmission code. Yes, sir. The rest of them are gonna be on there. Yes, sir, but that code will show up on there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. okay. Uh, this this so that, is a very helpful tool. So that's kind of like a master place for all the fault codes to go. This is a central hub of everything. Yeah, so everything's going to go there eventually. Yes. Sir. So if there's something wrong with the truck, no matter where it is, that'll tell you so you don't have to go look up the individual. Yes. Yeah, so what, what it'll do is, if, I, you, you, if you have an active code, you can come on here and tell me it happened this date. It happened on the FF stands for firefight system. Yep. And this is the code number. And this is how many times it happened and this is what it is if you can give me all that information mm -hmm. i can get parts together to come with me before or i can tell you look at this or do a hard reset and see if it comes back on you know 